my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful, my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We read in today's first reading a beautiful description of the early church. And Lord Jesus, we know that your words are spirit and life, and that anything that's true of the early church is also true of the church always, of all times, and is an ideal we have to keep striving for and a mystery we have to keep encountering and trying to make more present and and more fully effective in our life. This is what we read. Now the company of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had everything in common. Cor unum et anima una in St. Jerome's Vulgate, famous description of the church. Those who believed were of one heart, cor unum, and soul. One soul and one heart, cor unum et anima una. The unity of the members of the church, the unity of all Christians. And Lord, help us to realize this, Jesus, that we are united because we all belong to you. In Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others, St. Paul writes, writing to the Romans. In Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We're of one heart and one soul because we belong to Christ, because we belong to the mystical body of Christ, because we're all incorporated into Christ by baptism. Jesus, thank you for this connection with you and this connection that it causes with all other Christians and especially all other Catholics who are fully incorporated into the, into the Catholic Church. Sometimes in life, you run into people in unexpected places and you don't associate someone with that place or that environment and you're surprised to see them there. It's like, Hey, what are you doing here, right out in the park? Or what are you doing here in this restaurant or, or whatever? As a teacher or a priest, this can be disconcerting for students to realize that a priest has legs, right? Because usually they see him with his cassock on or a priest goes outside <laughs> because usually they see him in church. And similar situations, right? What are you doing here? I didn't know you had legs. I didn't know you got to go outside, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this is us in the church. We meet each other in Christ. And no matter how different we may be, and no matter how much we may disagree on some things, no matter how difficult life is or different situations are, we find each other in Christ. And it might be surprising at first. Hey, what are you doing here? But then we realize that we all, we all belong. We're members one of another. Members one of another. Each member belongs to all the others. Jesus, help me to truly love all Christians, truly love all members of my parish community, of my church community. In this way, united in you, that we're one heart and soul. And this leads to a great detachment from material things. It leads to a great sense of generosity and largesse in our attitude towards money and our attitude towards what we consider our things. No one said that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had everything in common. Now, before we jump to a kind of political or economic communism as a result of this verse, we realize that they did possess things. No one said that any of the things which he possessed was was his own. And so they did have private property. They did have private possessions. 
but they didn't consider them their exclusive property. Right? Everything they had was at the service of God and therefore also at the service of the church. They had everything in common, even while having private property or things that were proper to them. And that makes sense, right? How can I be generous with the church, generous with others, if I have nothing of my own to give? Where would the merit be of giving a big donation or or being generous with my time or my means or my property if it wasn't mine? And so this is not a call to communism, but it is a call to a kind of a radical attitude towards stuff. And stuff is primarily for the glory of God, right? Things, however nice they are, however expensive they are, or however necessary they are for my life, it's all for the glory of God. And therefore, we we have this basic attitude that I'm generous. I'm generous with my means. I'm generous with my time. I'm generous with my talents. That the things that I have and the skills that I have and the money I have at my disposal is not really just mine. Why? Because I don't belong to myself. St. Paul says that. You've been brought at a great price. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. And because we belong to God, we also belong to the church. And when we live this attitude, when we really try to see ourselves as members of the body of Christ, belonging to each other, everything I have is is at the disposal of God. And I'm willing to be very generous with others. I won't cling to myself. What ends up happening is we get so much more in return. We experience in our own way what the father said to the elder son in the parable of the prodigal son. The elder son doesn't want to go in to the party and he's upset and he's envious of this celebration that's been thrown for the prodigal son. And the father in pleading with him says, my son, you were always with me and everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. We belong to God. God is our father. And Jesus, above all, we have you. Jesus, we have you as our inheritance. We have God himself as our inheritance, as our portion and our cup, as the Old Testament puts it. God is my portion. God is my inheritance. We have God, and with God, we have everything. All that is mine is yours. Jesus says this to the Father, all mine are yours, and yours are mine. So the Son says to the Father, all that is mine is yours. All mine are yours. And the Father in the parable says to the Son, all that is mine is yours. And as Christians, as long as we're not clinging to ourselves, as long as we're not seeing ourselves primarily as individuals and only kind of accidentally or legally or externally related to others, as long as we're really trying to be united to Christ, to forge our identity in Christ, and therefore forge our identity as members of the church, it frees us to be generous with our means, not to cling to them. And it also opens up to receive the inheritance of God. This is St. Paul. Let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. It's the old image, right? The, the difference between the open hand that's open to receive and therefore detached from what it already has and the closed hand that closes in on what it possesses and therefore also in on itself and can only have what it already has and not receive. Jesus, we ask you to have a soul that's like the open hand, ready to receive all your blessings because we're detached from what's already in our hand, ready to really see ourselves in you and see ourselves as members of one another 
because we're not closed in and possessive and jealous of our own identity or of our own status or of our own property. Where we open up our hand to be detached from those things. And in opening up our hand and our soul, we receive so much in return. All that is mine is yours. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.